Hello there, I'm Mark Sebastian, the founder of OptionPit.com, and this is Trading Butterflies Right Now, How I'm Trading Them. Um, reminder, this is for education purpose only. Shouldn't be considered investment advice. Options carry risk, consult a financial professional. If you have questions, um, you know, just real briefly about myself. Uh, I was a floor trader for about 10 years. Uh, then I started Option Pit. We're an education consulting firm. We work with individual retail traders, teaching them how to think and trade like a professional. Uh, and we work with professional traders doing, you know, things like uh, consulting services, things like that. Money managers, hedge funds. Um, we are not an education company. We are a group of traders who teach and who've developed a community of other traders who also teach. And we, we love that piece. Um, we have a great uh, community of guys that talk to each other. So what are we going to talk about? Um, we're going to talk about uh, kind of basics of a butterfly, some real basics on, on execution. I don't know if I'm going to call it the secrets to his success. Uh, I'm not going to talk about adjustments, but I will talk about how to decide what fly to use, uh, notably right now. Uh, and so we're going to take a few minutes on... Um, on, uh, on executing butterflies, all right? And then I'm gonna walk through how everything works and I'm gonna actually show you on charts the different trades that I'm interested in. Um, I'm gonna pick two that I like per uh, myself and then I will pick one stock from you guys that I'll look at um, involving, you know, whether how I might use a butterfly or if I would at all. Uh, and then I will take uh, one or maybe two questions. So just the basics, um, a butterfly is a combination of a call spread or put uh, call or put credit and debit spread on successive strikes. Creates a one by two by one ratio where the trade is typically short the two middle options. <clears throat> In the case of an iron fly, which I'm gonna use fly and iron fly pretty, pretty interchangeably. Um, uh, an iron fly is going to be short a straddle and long the surrounding strangle or vice versa. All right. Um, you could also maybe consider it selling an at the money call spread and an at the money put spread at the same time. All sorts of different ways of thinking about the way butterflies work. And the net creates a tightly defined high yield area for the spread to profit from. All right. And that is your classic butterfly income spread that many of you maybe have seen before. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but I'm going to talk a lot about a, 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 a lot. This is what a basic butterfly looks like. This is kind of how it progresses. You know, this is the red line being today, the purple line being ex uh, at expiration. All right. A butterfly is in many ways simply a short straddle or a long straddle that is hedged to reduce cost and risk. Traders like having defined risk in this trade instead of the unlimited risk of the straddle, or in the case of buying a straddle, they like selling the wings to reduce the cost. It can also be used as a cheap directional option uh, versus like a call or put spread. I love, and I mean love, directional butterflies. My, my students will tell you, I trade directional butterflies constantly uh, because they're a really good good thing to trade. I really like trades with a high, uh, low risk, high reward payout. And that's really what a butterfly creates. And they, the butterfly many of us are used to um, are kind of short gamma trades, but the other ones are uh, long gamma. And then that's kind of when I'm long the wings. Uh, similar to a broken wing. No, I'm going to talk about broken wing flies as well. Um, so the fly is a race, all right? Can the spread that you sold collect enough premium before the underlying starts to take off, all right? The more time passes, the more the spread makes, the more tempting it is to go for more premium. If playing a long gamma fly, the opposite of the above statements are true, right? It's a race for movement. You know, how much decay will happen while you're waiting for the underlying to move? That's basically the, the crux of the 
of the butterfly relationship. So this is, again, your standard short butterfly. This is a short, uh, a long iron butterfly. This is, um, I took this one today. This is of the S&P 500, the SPX. Uh, this is one I kind of like. Uh, obviously, I'll, I'll spend a little time. This is a sh long straddle, short the wings. All right. And again, we're going to have plenty of time to look at trades that I'm looking at right now. So in theory, a call fly, put fly, and iron fly are all the same trade. Put flies and call flies should be about the same price. Cost of carry and the dividend can change that price a little bit, but not much. Um, but generally speaking, call flies and put flies are going to be about the same price. And for an iron butterfly, you take the strike width to the center. So if it's you know, uh, a 100, 105, 110 butterfly. So it's five points wide, we would say. So I would, if I take the cost of the put fly and the call fly, either or, and subtract it from that strike width, it should give me the iron butterfly. So for instance, if I buy a call fly for two bucks, that would mean the iron butterfly would be cost me $3. All right, very simple, right? Five minus two equals three. So the other butterflies we're gonna look at are broken wing and ratio. Another type of fly is the broken wing or skip strike that I've heard people call. I hate the term skip strike. I've never heard anybody who is a floor trader call it anything but a broken wing. Um, these are great given the right situation. And, and I'll talk about some of that. And traders can also trade a one by three by two butterfly. Yeah, a one by three by two butterfly or a ratio fly. They, again, under the right circumstances is gonna look really good. And the key is the IV and the skew of the surface. So just real briefly, This is a broken wing butterfly. And I'll walk through the actual strike. So I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to show you a picture of these right now before I really dig in. And the ratio is gonna look very similar, the one by three by two, very similar. All right, this is a 29, 90, 20, 970, 29, uh, 20. And this is a 2990, 2960, 2930, one by three by two. Similar trade, similar action, just, you know, they're all uh, a little different. So implied volatility is, you know, a moving target. It goes up and down. The VIX is the most famous measurement of implied volatility. It's basically how expensive are option prices? Really simple. Skew, I'm going to show you a picture of skew. This is a skew surface of October in the SPX. And what it's telling you is relative to at the money, at the money is right here. How much do calls cost and how much do puts cost? In indexes, equities and ETFs generally, puts are more expensive than calls. Why are puts more expensive than calls? You might ask. The answer is because um, hedging, right? A lot of people, most people are long stocks. So in order to protect, to protect their positions, what do they do? They buy puts. In order to protect their, to pay for the puts, what do they do? They sell calls. So the act of collaring is what creates skew. So now just some real basics that I like, generally speaking. For indexes, I'll do non-directional and directional butterflies. For ETFs, I'll do non-directional and directional. 
For equities, I almost always only do directional. And for commodities, I almost only do directional. Same thing generally for uh, like currencies, all right? For volatility stuff, I almost all, you know, I'll do both for sure. I'll absolutely do both. So with that, um, I'm going to briefly talk about the offer, look at some trades, then I'll talk a little more about the offer that I made. Oh, first I want to talk about management. So if this is for a, generally speaking, for a non-directional butterfly, I want to shoot for 10 to 15%, and that's return on risk. I don't want to lose more than 10, and I never lose more than 20. And leave them alone, unless they're down by at least 5% or outside of the tent. Use smart adjusting. I'm not really going to talk too much about adjusting today, but the one thing I will say is don't throw capital at a trade. And what do I mean by don't throw capital at a trade? Days to expiration, usually somewhere between 15 and 15 and, and 35. But I'll do I'll do a week. I will do like within a week. You know, and, and in those I'm just looking to hold for a day or two. Um, but most importantly, don't strike with is going to vary, Trevor. Um, don't throw capital at a trade. So I love going on these different alleged gurus that don't usually don't trade. And they, they just show throwing more and more, more and more and more money at a trade until eventually the trade doesn't lose. The problem is, is that we're not bottomless pits of money. And most people can't deal with that kind of that kind of crazy loss. Um, you know, I, I literally watched a guy trade his butterflies, trade butterflies, and he started off with about eight thousand of risk and threw so much money at the trade, he lost forty thousand dollars. Think about that. And that's called throwing capital at a, at a problem. How do you limit your loss 20%? Couple of things. Um, I have really tightly defined risk um, and I stay on top of all of my trades, right? I'm not letting things, you always have some gap risk. You know, you wake up and things have moved crazily, but you shouldn't put yourself in position to eat a bunch of gap risk. Uh, right now, one of the problems with income trading which is why I'm not doing a lot of it, except for in like some volatility trades, is that most of the movement, most of the movement we're seeing is actually happening overnight and not happening during the day. There's been very little movement from during the day. All right. So um just real briefly, I'm going to go through this little special I've got. Um, this is a really neat one. You get Mastering Butterflies and Condors, which is a four-hour class. I'm, I'm, we're spending two hours digging in to how to trade butterflies, two hours into how to trade condors. You get one month of access to Option Pit Live, which is our chat room. And it comes with um, my daily chats that I do for a half hour, 45 minutes, up to an hour. Yeah, I think I was on for over an hour. Um, and then I come up with kind of one little fun trade idea that I like that day. Um, and I take questions, I interact with the students, uh, things like that. Um, and then it also comes with a 30 minute phone call with me. So you get, you know, and so it's a package worth about 900 bucks. And it's yours for just $97, $97. Go to optionpit.com slash fly OPL. That's F-L-Y-O-P-L to register. All right, and with that, um, I'm gonna take a look at two trades I like here. I'm gonna uh, start with an index. I'm gonna look at SPX. And I wanna point out, that a 
right now as we're talking. The ES, that's the S&P 500 futures, are up a lot. They're about 15 bucks. So, um, you know, this is probably not going to apply tomorrow. But, you know, the nice thing is I can kind of walk you through some of this stuff. I will take trade. I will take questions. Um, just, I will take questions in a little bit. Um, for now, everybody throw out maybe one stock they want me to look at. Uh, but what I'm going to do first is we're going to look at SPX and we're going to talk about what do I see that I like. I want my option montage. That's what was missing. All right, here we go. And so the first thing I always do is I kind of look at, I really don't have a preference on my duration with butterflies. What I'm generally looking, this is live vol X or Sterling vol trader. I'm looking for usually when I set up, because the first trade I'm going to look at is a short, a long iron butterfly or short regular butterfly. And what I like to look for is where is there some cheap premium to buy or sell? And generally speaking, I found that they, they overprice the Monday discount. So Mondays have been kind of oversold. And I like finding, and I find that, you know, about 10 days out has been really cheap. So to start, when do I like an iron, a butterfly? Um, where I'm long the straddle, short the wings. And I want to point out this. So this is 10. The white line is 10-day historical volatility. The blue line is 20-day historical volatility. And this red line is implied. So you can see the 30 day implied is trading at a huge discount to 20 day realized and about even with 10 day realized. And 10 day realized seems to have found a floor here and we've got some movement starting to pick up today and then overnight. So I'm looking across here and again, this Monday implied volatility of about 10.94 10 is cheap. I'm also attracted to the quarterly option here, which is also happens to be a Monday. Um, I'm gonna look to start at this September 23rd option. I'm gonna walk you through how I set one of these up. So you can see we closed 3,000. This has 12 days to expire, and it costs me $47 for the straddle. Well, first thing I wanna do is how much have we moved in the last 13 days? You know, the last 10 days. Have we moved at least that much? Well, you tell me. Have the last 13 days been worth $47? Here's the 23rd. Let's see, what was 13 days ago? It was uh, the 29th. Well, on the 29th, we were about uh, 29. We closed 29.24 and we closed 3,000. So we've moved 75 bucks. So we've definitely moved more. And we had a nice move today. Right, we had about an 11% volatility move today. So now 
two ways I will set up a butterfly. I'll, I'll do the entirety of the broken wing butterfly, or sometimes I'll just do a partial broken, not a broken wing, partial iron fly. So I'm buying my straddle for 47. That's $50 wide. So now I'm going to look at, let me set some implied volatility here. And part of it is just kind of figuring out where I want stuff. So I generally speaking want to sell an option worth at least five bucks, maybe more. I'd love to get kind of one-to-one -one risk reward. So with us trading 3,000, if I, I can sell the 2920s, which are eight, $80 away at about six bucks. So my $80 strap, my $47 straddle, now costs $41. And I've just sold a put. If I sell the call at 3080, I'm paying $39.5 for an iron butterfly with about 12 days to expire that is 80 points wide. This is my kind of trade. This is the kind of trade I like. However, one rule, one rule of thumb I generally will do. I'm not getting $2.50 for this option that is 80 bucks wide. So you know what I'm generally going to do? I'm going to skip it. And I'm just going to be long a straddle and short a put. And you know, maybe maybe I'll cheat in a little bit to get my cost down a little bit. Usually I don't. And so I'm going to be long a $41 a $41 straddle with a short put. Now, what is the positive of this? Well, you can see I do have I do create a much longer delta. But the nice thing is if we move higher, I don't have much of an issue. Yeah, it kind of is. If we move higher, I don't have much of an issue because I'm a long delta. If we move lower, I want you to look at the Greeks here, guys. And I'll pull this up in, in Think or Swim here in a minute. See, the reason why I like this trade so much now, right? Take a look. Now I'm going to go back to days. If we drop to 29.20 quickly, what's going to happen to implied volatility? It's going to go up. So you can see with implied volatility up, I'm not in such a bad position. And this is a short iron butterfly. And this is a trade I like a lot right now. All right, for those of you that are thinkorswim, think swim acolytes, I'll briefly show you what this looks like on that. Like I said, I will give credit to the thinkorswim people where credit is due. They are good at developing a cult following. By straddle and so put. I got some other stuff in here from a mentoring session I did earlier. And there you can see what it looks like on Thinkorswim. So I'm using this out of the money put. Now there's some reasons why that out of the money put is worth so much, 
But really what I'm doing is selling skew and buying volatility. And that's why that works. I'm the best sometimes. Yeah, it's an interesting trade, right? All right, now, let's talk about the cues. And now I'm gonna show you how I might look at a So I did sell the puts. Look, yeah, I know. I, I really like the way that's set up. That's a nice looking trade. We're going to look at that one in the morning tomorrow. Yeah. So with the cues, I'm going to take a slightly different approach. And I'm going to look at kind of different months. And so let's look at ad simulated trades. And here's another one. And now I'm going to kind of briefly talk about one by three by two. So I'm looking now for something where I have some elevated implied volatility and maybe a little more time. So I'm actually going to look at regular October. Now I know everybody is doom and gloom and the world's going to end. If you follow Twitter, the amount of, of people on Twitter that have proclaimed the world is ending for the last 10 years, the amount of money they've, they've allegedly made on every sell off cannot possibly cover the amount of money they, they claim to, they, the size they claim to be short all those different times. Me, I generally think that we're gonna meander high. So now let's look at a chart of the cues. And again, I look at kind of 180 as kind of a line in the sand here, you see this? How many times we can bounce off 180? So I do think that we're heading likely, likely higher or at least not going down a lot. So I wanna go to October, give myself some time. You know, I could do the October 11s. They have a, a month to go if I want. And I want to look at, at these 180s. And what I want you to notice is look at all this curvature. All right, I'm going to look at a skew chart here. Uncheck all of these, except for October 11. You know, I'll just use regular October so that I have tighter markets. You know, this late in the day, 10% all over a quarter. As you can see, you really do have some like kind of juicy premium here. I'm going to take this out to 25%. And if I look at it on this road, I can actually see, are there any gaps here? And what I notice is that like, you know, the jump from 185 vol to like where we get to around 180 is pretty high. So a trade I'm gonna look at you know, the 180s are 22 and a half. Uh, this is October 11. Let me go to regular OC. The 180 puts are about 22 and a half. The 185s are 20. The 175s are 24. So if I buy one, sell three, by two, I'm taking in a pretty decent vol credit. So 
one of the things that's important, this is a one by three by two trade. And one of the things that's really important about these trades is to take a credit and to have a line in the sand. So on this one, I'm gonna take in about 17 cents. You're saying, Mark, what's 17 cents? Why, why, why do you, you know, what's your deal? What's, what's the deal? All right, I'm gonna do my custom. All right, so we're gonna buy a 185 put. And I can go into a lot more detail on how I, I structure these things. Uh, and we do go through in the, the course that I, I offered out there. And there you go, there's my credit. And if you look at a risk profile, what I like about the way this is set up is that as time passes, this turns into a really nice trade. So, so watch this. You're gonna see some really interesting stuff. You know, I do think that we're due for a little bit of pullback. So take a look here. This is October 7th. I'm actually above, look at my PL line at expiration and look how much I'm making if we stick in kind of where we are or drop a little bit. I'm actually making more than my net credit. You know, do this 10 times. And you start to see, I'm, I'm actually making an extra 200 bucks on this. And this whole time, if the underlying drops, I'm actually rooting for the underlying to drop with time passing. This is a slow burn trade and really works in my favor. So when is the time that a trade like this really works? Now's not really the opportune time to do this. When do you think I'm, I'm doing a trade like this? When vol's really high, you know, and it's a great trade to kind of play, hey, I think the market's done going down. The last couple of weeks, yeah, the last two weeks top of a bull run is perfect. This is a great trade. This is one that I really like um, at, you know, I think we, coming out of the next Fed meeting, this is a really interesting looking trade. No, Trevor, there's no rule, high rule. All right, this is a good one. You're, those are good questions for chat tomorrow. Um, do we have, and, and so now I will take one stock to look at for a directional trade. And I'll tell you about the one I did today. Um, I put on a PayPal trade, directional PayPal trade. One by two by one. Did I get the McDonald's on? Oh, good, I did. All right. And the other one I did was McDonald's. Um, you know, I'll tell you what I like, but like little directional butterflies is the snapback trade. So you're saying, well, Mark, what's the snapback trade? McDonald's gets punched in the face. Um, I'm worried that it, you know, could be a little while for it to pop back, but I know it's event, it's going to make a run back at 215. So what I do, I set up an inexpensive butterfly, the 210, 220, 230. Um, and this is the trade. You can see I did a little better than it closed. I paid um, $4.30. I sold these at, at 88 and I bought these for 12. Right? Is that right? I can look at the confirm. Yeah, four four and a quarter and four thirty. So call it four twenty-seven. 
Um, does anybody have I so two two minutes real fast? I will take I'll look at one stock for a uh, directional. Somebody throw out an, a stock name. B A. All right, I'm going to show you one. So oh man, I should have sat on it. I'll tell you what I like for B A. B A is had a lot of problems, right? This is one where it's just been, you know, this was a $500 stock in March. And it's a, I mean, look at this run up, 460 bucks. And it's down to 330, the max is a disaster. We're gonna do BA. Seems to get a little bit of a bid. All right, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna set up a long-term directional butterfly. We're gonna look at March. March, yes, March. So in March, I so I think Boeing could back get back to its all-time high by March. They released the max, there's a search for yield. The all-time high is 440. So I'm gonna buy. And you know, we're trading 380. The 380 is about a $60 straddle in March. So that means I want my long less than $60 away from 380. So that's gonna, so I'm gonna start my bull fly at 420 bucks. That's gonna cost me $14 and 70 cents. All right. So the next standard deviation. So one and a half standard deviation is going to be $120, right? We're 380. Oh no, that's two standard deviations. One and a half is going to be like 90 bucks. So that's going to put us at 470, right? Because uh, the straddle is about 60 bucks. That's about 80% of a of standard deviation. I'm 10 bucks. I'm uh, let's see, two thirds of that. So I'm actually at about. 40, I got about a 45% chance of hitting this. About a 40% chance. So one and a half straddles is gonna be about one and a quarter standard deviations. So I'm gonna sell those at about 470 or 480. So that's 420, 470, 520. And what I like about this, so this is a 50 point butterfly and it only cost me about $7. So I'm getting a payout of, you know, seven to one. And I have, I'm getting a 71, seven to one payout on something that has about a 40% chance of working. Do we, uh, 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 you know, not of paying seven to one, but has a 40% chance of being in the money. Do we like something like that? Yeah, this is a directional trade that I can trade, all right? This is how I set things up, all right? So again, there you have it. I wanna point out one more time this OPL package. You're gonna get all kinds of great stuff Optionpit.com slash fly OPL. I'll drop this in here, 97 bucks. This offer is good until Sunday. All right, sign up tonight and I will throw in a special gift. It'll be a surprise. But if you sign up tonight, I'll throw in a special gift. Um, no, probably not, Trevor. Um, I get why you want Butterfly Hunter is awesome. We do have for like professionals software that actually hunts out this stuff. Um, but you know, I don't want to quite get into that. Um, maybe maybe we can go through that with the buyers of this. I'll, I'll give you maybe a a little trial of of trying out the Butterfly Hunter or looking at it at least. So. You're gonna get a one, uh, daily email from me on what I'm watching, access to our chat room, uh, my daily chat wraps, all kinds of actionable ideas. Um, 
you know, I go through adjusting and managing risk, latest webinars, special deals and free stuff for me, access to special deals on software and brokerage, um, a 30 minute session with me, and of course, mastering butterflies and iron condors, 97 bucks, it's worth at least 900 bucks. Um, and if you sign up tonight, I'll throw in a special little gift. It'll be a surprise, but you're gonna like it. All right, with that, I will take exactly two questions. Yeah, maybe I'll send you my meatball, my recipe for spaghetti and meatballs. Selling skew and buying volatility SPX trade. That's correct. So I'm selling the out of money put, that's the skew, and I'm buying volatility because I want the underlying to move, preferably up. The course has already been done, so it's pre-recorded, which means you can watch it tomorrow. Um, you will get all the materials for the course. Um, I'll send you this. Uh, and if you have questions or comments or anything involving the course, we're happy to go through any of it with you. So this is in our out of our bank of courses. Oh yeah, you did take it, Trevor. And yes, it was good. Thank you, Trevor. And if we do to redo this class live, I'll uh, let you attend for free. All right, Dan? And we usually do redo these classes about once a quarter. And I'm due to do a live class, aren't I? All right. Does that make sense? How many hours is the course? Four. Four hours long. Thank you, Steve. Love me some Steve. Have you listened to the Cash and Couture podcast yet, Steve? Do we get an ebook with this? I will happily send you one if you'd like. What kind of ebook do you want? It was taught live. But it is not live. But what is live is that the access to chat room where I talk every day. The link says 97 a month for 12 months. That, no, no, no. After the first month, it's $97 to maintain access to the chat room. Um, it does explain the process for the trade. Um, after the first month, it's 97 bucks to maintain access. But if you decide you don't want it, you'll, uh, you'll, uh, you know, we just cancel the reoccurring charge. Does that make sense, Neil? It was taught live, yeah. But yeah, I go through the process. I go through how to build them. Cash and Couture, you got to check it out. You're going to love it. If you want to listen to my wife rip on me for 45 minutes straight, then you're going to love that podcast. And Steve, knowing you, you're going to love that. That podcast is for you. <laughs> We're still working on it. It's brand new, Neil. We'll get there. Uh, all right. Uh, if anybody has, does it, uh, if that's all, we don't have any more questions about the course or anything like that. Uh, if you have any other questions for me, please shoot me an email or uh, give me a call, 888-TRADE-01. My email is mark at option.com and you are uh, welcome to, uh, to ask me anything you'd like uh, via email and I'll, uh, I'll try to answer honestly. Have a great, uh, great night and a great uh, rest of your evening. Good night.